my name is uh, Bernard Krohn. I'm fourth generation owner of the Kroner Company. I'm uh, 40 years old and uh, I'm married. I have two kids and uh, I've now been with, with the company, with the Kroner Company for 11 years. I know that this will be difficult to encapsulate, but I, I would like our listeners, our readers, to get a, a abbreviated history of the company going back, you know, four generations. If you could kind of tell me what what uh, we could we could share about the history of the company. Of course, um, uh, to go to every uh, detail would be a little bit too long. But uh, in our company now is. Uh, more than 110 years old and uh, we started in 1906 in, in Spelle in a small village uh, near Osnabrück in, in the northwest of Germany. Uh, my great grandfather started as a blacksmith and um, as a, the whole family worked in the company so to say. My great grandmother uh, run the, uh, the farm and, and uh, a little uh, a beer pub which we had besides uh, the blacksmith workshop and uh, and then uh, when second generation took uh, took over my grandfather we already manufactured small farm machines tillage equipment these kind of things and um, the company continuously uh, grows uh, also uh, after the second world war and then in uh, in the 60s, my father took over, third generation, and uh, under his leadership, of course, the, uh, the company had the, the fastest and, and biggest growth in history. And uh, uh, we also uh, went into the commercial vehicle business. Uh, we are now Europe's second largest manufacturers of uh, commercial vehicles. Uh, trailers, uh, reefer trailers, uh, semi-trailers, all of these kind of things. Um, and uh, yeah, I took over 11 years ago and uh, um, we're still on the good way. Uh, you know, every generation change has a certain danger and, 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 uh, and challenges, but um, uh, so far I really enjoy that. As a young boy, did you know that this is the, the dream that you wanted to pursue? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, sometimes I say I, uh, I wanted to be a, a circus director. Uh, uh, sometimes I have the feeling I'm, I'm, I am one, yeah? uh, but uh, um, no. Uh, of course, there were times when, when maybe some teachers were complaining about my behavior uh, to learn, but uh, and then I said, no, I, I don't want to take over the company, but in, in, in deep in myself, I always knew I, that's the only thing I want to do, definitely. Another question about where you are today and the product segments that you, you serve, and, and I've seen the term, you know, green fodder, hot harvesting equipment several times. Can you tell our, our readers, our listeners, what, uh, what product segments you define yourself in today? Or maybe we are the only hay and forage specialist in the world. We are really specialized in, on hay and forage equipment. So that is, I think that really des describes quite good who we are and what we do. I wanted to talk about the decision to exit the tillage, which must have been a difficult decision for some at the time, yes. probably your dealers, customers, but boy, it sure looks like it, uh, it was an act of brilliance of genius. Looking back at what happened, could you talk about that? I, I think the decision was, was very hard for my father and, and at that time Heinz Kroner, his, his, uh, his cousin, um, that uh, yeah, because it, it was, the turnover was, I would say, one third of the company, so it was quite, quite important. Uh, we had a lot of people working in that particular area, we had a long history. Tillage equipment, more or less, was was the first equipment we made, but uh, we also had a, uh, the costs were quite high. Uh, I think uh, it was, as I said, one third of the 
of the turnover, but maybe 50%, 55% of the cost. I think uh, the decision was hard, and uh, but but they they made it. Uh, they talked to all the uh, uh, to all the customers, to the partners. Uh, they told them uh, why they had to decide this and that they want to focus and uh, that they have good ideas in, in balers, in, in, in machinery for the future uh, uh, related to the hay and forage uh, uh, sector. Every partner, every customer could understand quite well why they have taken this decision. They stick with the company and uh, uh, yeah, together they were quite successful. What it did for you exiting those segments allowed you to deeply pursue what was coming in the in in the mid '90s with the square baler, the big M, the big X. Could you yeah. talk about the freeing up of the <clears throat> capacity and to do those pursue those things? I think that was. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if if we would have uh, uh, produced something like the big M without getting rid of of of, of the tillage equipment. So as you said, uh, that, that really gave us uh, uh, free space in, 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 in the development department to think out of the box. What can drive the, the turnover and the development of the company in the next years without tillage equipment? Where should we go? Which way? What is the right way? Uh, what is the development of our customers? Are they getting bigger? Uh, we have more and more uh, contractors and these kind of things. So we, we should focus on, on, on machines, uh, which also getting bigger and, and, and uh, going in that direction, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that that opened up everybody uh, because I said, okay, now, now we have to do something. Everybody is looking on us. Everybody thinks when you stop a product line, you, you could lose turnover, you, you, you lose uh, customers, maybe uh, uh, the company is going down, whatever. Now we have to show everybody that we are still here. We have lots of good ideas and, and we go on and we are ready to grow. And uh, I think everybody in the company was, had, had that feeling. Not only the, the managing directors or my father or, or the, the leaders, everybody I think in the company, especially the engineers also. Yeah. It's, um reminded me of a, a quote I really liked from Anna, your, your great-grandmother. Um, we talked about um, when, when your great-grandfather had gotten rid of the debt and, and yes. he was going to, to toast to schnapps and yeah. she said, <laughs> don't, don't, don't be a fool. Yeah. Uh, small people like us, they, they have to have a certain debt, otherwise they, they cannot grow or we cannot become bigger. Yeah, that is uh, a saying uh, in, in in German, it sounds a little bit nicer and quicker, like, like I could say it in English, but um, my father told me very early about that. I, I heard this story very often, yeah. It's a great story, because it's, it's kind of like we're putting our chips on the table, we're going to grow, we're not going to be satisfied. All in, <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, we have, to, we have to take a certain, how do you call it, uh, a certain amount of money uh, 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 to to grow to 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 do something new, yeah, and and uh, to have the uh, to have the possibility that we can big get bigger and bigger and yeah, that was always important. 